broadcasting live to the UK. UK. News, information, entertainment, and the best music from the past 40 years. This is Play 2 UK. Tommy Point. Call 01243 55 60 60. Email studio at playradiouk.com. Skype play.radio.uk. Now, live from the south coast of England, The Tommy Boyd Show, only on Play 2 UK. As Stephen Alley drive away into the night, it's just you and me. Uh, 10 o'clock it is, just gone, UK time, good day. Uh, around the world, if you're podcasting, hello, how was Christmas? <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> no, I'm just talking to somebody who's on the... Drive safely. There they go. Um, I was listening to Steve talking about... Um, finding some money in the cash machine and wondering what to do about it. And it, it is something that happened to me about oh, uh, 10 or 15 weeks ago, and it was resolved in a very strange way, which, um, uh, it's a good story, interesting story. I'm just leaning across, getting myself organised. Bear with me. Hello. There we are. And we'll get to that as the evening unfolds. Uh, but it's basically you and me. Um, often on these talk strands on Play 2, usually, in fact... Well, uh, always, to be precise, um, whoever is uh, talking with you uh, is accompanied by somebody else in the studio and the conversation goes on and it's usually uh, a him and her or, or, or a him and him or whatever. Sometimes there's two of us, sometimes there's three of us. But um, what we're doing at the moment, uh, since you listening at this moment in time live are part of what we consider to be our sort of core Listeners, hardcore listeners, people who've been with us for a while and people who we want to keep uh, at the sort of uh, high in our mind when come January, we're going to be expanding slightly the talk program, quite a lot actually, expanding the talk programming here on the internet, new media. Uh, and with that, it, inevitably, there will be an increase in the, in the size of the community, which is how we regard you, not as being listeners or audience I don't, anyway, but as being uh, part of a community here. Because the internet is more about community than being an audience. Everybody who, uh, just about everybody who uses the internet in an interactive way is going to be part of one or more communities. Um, if you join up to one of the social networks, th things most of us now probably are, then there's one community. There are forums as well, which is another community. There are so many websites dedicated to specific interests. Um, that you will feel if if you're on one, if you regularly go to one of those that you're part of that kind of a community and so uh, being intelligent about this new so sort of technology this new media um, we recognize that people such as yourself listening at the moment or podcasting hello are part of a community uh, and this startup community uh, we would hope will always be cherished by the people at, uh, by all of us at Play Radio and by the talk shows in particular, because more than the music shows, we obviously cherish and to a certain extent depend on uh, feedback uh, when we're on air, when we're off air, in the form of emails. Uh, Skype is probably the way forward when it comes to hearing people's voices, and it's it's nice to hear people's voices. It's great to get an email. We tend not to use texts, although we do have a text address uh, simply because at the moment everybody who is listening is listening uh, on a pc or on a laptop or uh, on an mp3 player or, or, or an ipod but you're probably aware that uh, mot uh, the motoring industry is beginning to wake up to new media and i understand there are cars rolling off the production line. well <laughs> if there are cars rolling off the production line in the united states at the moment with what we're hearing about the state of the car industry out there uh, but the plan is for more and more of those cars to come off the production line equipped uh, with, on the dashboard, a, a Wi-Fi receiver, which I presume, not being technical, means that when the car is travelling inside um, a mobile cell, uh, well, a cell, inside a, uh, a Wi-Fi cell, which was originally set up in order to enable mobile phone communications, then that car is going to be able to pick up Wi-Fi radio. Uh, and Wi-Fi radios are beginning to roll out on the high street. And I was talking to one of the manufacturers, Roberts, and another lot uh, called Revo, who were telling me that their sales of Wi-Fi radios um, are going very well. 
and Robert said that one of their Wi-Fi radios is their third highest selling radio at the moment. So all that is going to be happening and obviously the, the plan, uh, as far as people here at play are concerned, uh, is to get in early and make the kind of audio programming and multimedia programming because we hope to start using cameras that people want. But what do we want to listen to? On our PCs, on our laptops, on our Wi-Fi radios, or when we podcast. That's the thing. What do we want to listen to? Because, dear listener, you, like me... Good evening, if you just arrived. It's been Steve Paul uh, with Ali this evening from 8 until 10. He's been talking about a number of important issues. Cracking interview with one of the plain stupid people, which I enjoyed. If you've had a chance to collect your thoughts on that, um, I'm happy to take your uh, observations. Email is a good thing to do that, studio at playradiouk.com. Uh, but it's myself, Tommy, um, and on my own, with just me and the listener. That's yourself. It's just gone ten past, it's just coming up to ten past ten. And one of the things I wanted to do on this slightly unusual bit of our talk strands is take the opportunity to do what anybody else would call market research, but it's, it, it's a, a lot less scientific than that. And at the same time, hopefully, it's a lot more thorough because, I've, personally, I've never been involved. I've never been stopped in the street and Gallup polled. Uh, so, uh, but I imagine, in fact, I know, that when they do collar you with a clipboard, they ask you a number of questions and UA, B and C and so forth. Uh, but I'm more interested in, a conversa in conversations about the kind of thing that is of value to you that you can't hear anywhere else. That's the, what they call the USP, isn't it? The unique selling point of this type of broadcasting, that we can do things that you can't hear anywhere else. Now, if you get a moment right now to just sort of collect some thoughts on that, what could that be? Last night, from about half 11 until 12 o'clock, we had a really interesting contribution from a Skyper called Oscar, who was talking about the state of radio in this country, in the United Kingdom, um, and who was also talking uh, a little bit about his reservations about it, uh, which I, you know, I was quite happy to share and keep moving along because the things that Oscar had to say might be the things that you yourself find yourself thinking and agreeing with, which is that I don't think you have to be particularly free of caution, particularly renegade, maverick, particularly over the top in order to create a type of communication which is right for the 21st century. In other words, it's appropriate for the new technology, which is, of course, the Internet. But it's most of all appropriate for intelligent people who have a curiosity, who don't choose to be offended. Most of the Green Ink Brigade enjoy it when they have an opportunity to set bang off a letter that they know is going to get somebody into hot water. And because of the various charters and constraints at the BBC and because of the various authorities and commercial restraints that they have, in commercial broadcasting, uh, it's very easy to get someone into hot water. Uh, at the moment, what we want to do at play is use those additional freedoms that we have in terms of creativity, in terms of uh, commercial freedom, but also uh, there's the technology as well. We want to use them. We want to use them wisely. And the only wise way to, to, to use those freedoms, of course, is to make sure that where we're going is where people want us to go. So I thought that besides some other things this evening, we could just chew that piece, piece of fat. And um, There's one thing that I'd like you to do if, if you have an opportunity at the moment listening, uh, and, and bashing off an email to me uh, is no great hardship, I don't think. I'll remind you of the email address in just a second. But one thing I'd like to collect this evening is just some kind of indication of the geographical whereabouts of people who are listening, because uh, we have some good software that gives us feedback at a later date about who's involved. But I'd be interested now, if you had a moment, and if you could just address your email, studio at playradiouk.com, uh, with where you are, whether it's London or Birmingham or Senegal or wherever you might happen to be, 
um, I'd really appreciate just an email with your location on it right now, which it's not going to make cracking radio, so I probably won't be reading it out. But I would be really grateful if you could take a moment just to give me some idea of your circumstances where you're listening to this at the moment would be fantastic. Uh, you have to bear with me because being on my own tonight, I'm also handling um, the uh, Skype switchboard, which is great fun. Our Skype address is play.radio.uk. And you're more than welcome to uh, have a crack at communicating with me like that. I prefer, I'm prefer. i beginning to prefer Skype more and more because uh, the Skype setup gives a terrific range of information about um, yourself when you call. Although it's information, of course, that you yourself control because you'll have input that information when you sign on with Skype. Um, and we do have, obviously, the conventional switchboard up and running as well, 01243. 556060 is the switchboard number. You can tell them on my own, so I'm having to juggle 12 things at once. But one of the, let's uh, take a Skype call right off, shall we, from somebody I think who's just signed on. Hello, Skyper. Hello. Hello. How, are you receiving me loud and clear? Tremendously loud and clear, yes. Where about, whereabouts are you? Puerto Rico. No, you're not. You made that up. No, absolutely not. I'm in Puerto Rico. Okay. Um, what time is it in Puerto Rico at the moment? Hold on. I just need to check my watch. Oh, come on. It, it, <laughs> it's... Well, why did you say Puerto Rico? It's obviously somewhere like Lemington. I'm not stupid. Uh, well, I am a bit, but not that stupid. No, well, you were just asking for people calling all over the world, so I thought I'd just give no, you a little bit no, of boost up. You know, Tom? It doesn't diminish the exercise if you are in Leamington. I'm, I'm not in Leamington. I'm, in, Good, I'm, I'm in, not that. I'm not that. It's 6.13pm, Tuesday. You just went and Googled the time difference <laughs> between here and Puerto Rico. And may I say, if that's true, well done you. That's yeah, very I'm pretty good. quick, you know. Like, well, you certainly are. Uh, was it you who, during my little monologue, ha, monologue, was it you that I saw asked to sign on just then? Yes, yeah, there's Boyd's hairy ball sack. Yes, that's you. I can see you now on my screen. I can see balls, Boyd's hairy ball sack. Thank you for that. And, that's quite all right. And you haven't yet added a photo of yourself to your Skype. No, I won't be doing that as, I, that, as I'm a famous celebrity and I prefer to remain anonymous. Well, there's a certain sort of catch-22 about being an anonymous celebrity, isn't there? Well, it's, you know, I'm, I'm like that. I'm just a bit different. Yes. Okay. Do you, uh, so, you, you know, uh, obviously, I can't disclose my uh, real identity to you. But, you know, fine. what can you, hey, what can you do? Yes. What can Good you news do? about Seve being sent home today, isn't it? Is he back at home? Yes, but I was just wondering if he was sent home to die, that's all. Because the hospitals tend to do that, don't it's they? Or am I just looking at the bad side of it? I don't know. Well, I think one of the nice things is letting us know what runs through everybody else's mind. And that, that, that sort of thing runs through my mind, but you tend not to say it out loud. Partly because we worry in case there is a God and, yes. you know, we don't want to grieve him by saying... We don't want to what? Grieve the we don't, no, a God? No, aggrieve him. He's not listening to us. Well, He's probably listening to Capital. Or is he omnipresent? Nobody's listening to Capital. <laughs> oh, he's listening to Hawksky and Jacobs, and I don't blame him. Uh, nobody's listening to that, and he doesn't... In any case, I don't think God actually appears on any of the Rajar statistics. I don't think he, he's got a demography. Would he appear as one, or two, or everybody? No, he would if appear God as one. If God in, would he just be a one tick? But because we're all, like part of him yes. apparently yes would he just blow the ratings if he did tick a book you make an box? important point he really is target isn't he yeah i mean you want to get there if you can get god or jesus yes or anyone from that time you know that is related to the god family yes it blows any royal out the water doesn't it yes it does uh, he'd be in his own socio-economic group wouldn't he what would he be would he be plus a a what a plus wouldn't he a plus one. A plus. He would be A plus. Uh, could you know, I always... What am I? Because I, I, I don't know how they work. So no, I'll tell you. So you can ask me the pertinent questions. I will I, Then I can find out what socio-economic group I am. Okay, let's work through them then. And uh, listening, you can have a go as well. Finding out which, <coughs> in terms of radio, old radio, that is, 
which socio-economic group you're in. First See, of all... See, this is good for you and me. Yes. I learn something and you learn about your listeners. Yes, exactly. Contributors, it's a, sorry. It's a, it's a two-way stretch. Always. Always. Okay, so, question number one. Are you God? Unfortunately, I am God at the moment. I am God in my corner of the living room. That will be but a no, then. That would be a no. So you're not in socio-economic group A1. Okay. A plus one. Are you a lawyer or a doctor? No. A pilot? Thankfully not. Well, then it's unlikely that you're in socio-economic group A. Okay. Because they are professional people who, when I started in radio, were earning £60,000 a year or more. Lovely. Now, let's see, that was 30 years ago, so I would think nowadays, socio-economic group A, you're probably earning, let's say, 150 plus. Okay. Okay, so that's just former heads of social services at Haringey, for example. Yes. Yes. Now, former. socio-economic group B divides itself into two groups. Ooh. No, it doesn't. No, let's see, I'm lying. Oh. Socio-economic group B. Are you professional classes? Do you drive well, uh, a regularly updated new car? Are you what they used to call a white-collar worker? Are you what they used to call an executive? Yes, until the beginning of... The credit crunch. I drove a regularly updated German convertible after every three years. Well, you're almost certainly economic, socio-economic group B. Yeah, but I'm not driving that anymore. Ah, so you're socially mobile. I'm now, I've moved down a scale yes. to a second-hand Japanese ragtop. Ah, so you're socially mobile, but not geographically very mobile. I'm moving down, <laughs> down. well, like, yes. Yes. There it is. So you're probably C1 now. That's disappointing. Well, C1, you have C1 and C2. But does debt count for anything? What if you've got a massive pile of consumer and business and tax office debt? Then you're now, Donald, does that drag then you're, you up? No, then, yes, then you're Donald Trump. Fantastic. Okay. Now, I'm thinking you're socioeconomic group B. Um, C1 and C2 is kind of complex. It's, it's, it's a bit wishy-washy. Almost everybody is C1, C2. Then there's D... And then there's I don't E. Want to be D. No. And then there's E, which is the underclass, um, sort of sink estate dwellers, people who kidnap oh, their own kid, They're who the kid ones that listen to talk sport in the mornings. Yes, people who kidnap their own children, that sort of thing. I knew that was a ruse from the very beginning. Do you know, I think a lot of people did instinctively because there certainly was no hoo ha. No hoo ha. There was no hoo ha on a Madeline sort of scale, was there? There was no brouhaha about it. It's a marvellous it. word, isn't it? Brouhaha. Why don't you yeah. Google that whilst you're talking to me, since you're obviously multi-skilled? I, I am a category B, so I should be able to do that. Can you spell brouhaha? I've given it B-R-U-U-H-A-H-A-H-A. Yes. Now, you're short an O there, and you have too many U's. Ah, it's as given the, me the, the correct spelling, me, though. As the bishop said to the shepherd. Has a brouhaha yes. is a noisy, clamorous response to a stimulus produced by a crowd. Okay. It can also refer to the reaction expressed over a period of time to an event. Hold on, we're just waiting for the rest to load. Yes, fine. Uh, blah, 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 blah. To an event. Oh, there you go. It yeah. usually carries negative connotations. Right. I'm just going to. Except try for if it's at a cricket match. Okay. I now create a brouhaha. When I get stopped by the West Hove uh, rail, rail crossing. At the West Hove rail crossing. Okay, just bear yes. with me a second. What's your, um, what's your nomenclature on Skype again? Boyd's hairy ball sack. Okay. Boyd's hairy ball sack. I'm just going to add you to possibly... Uh, uh, there's a possibility I'm going to be able to carry out a conference call, which I'd like to try because it's interesting. Uh, and I've got... Is that? What? It'll so, be a brouhaha. It'll be a brouhaha. This might work, it might not. If it doesn't work, will you Skype me back? Absolutely more. Skype me back. Skype me back! It sounds like an old Cockney phrase, doesn't it? Well, Skype me back! Apples and pears. Yes. Apples and pears. Apples and pears. Yes, Bob Squash and a dig in the grave. Oh, uh, is Portslade a D? Yes. In general? Yes. Uh, yes. It is, isn't it? Yes, it's E. What about Shoreham? Um, that's C1, C2. Uh, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. Yeah, that's fine. 
I'm just trying to find this guy who's... Oh, I don't know where he is. Who is it? Um, there's a guy called Chris, but it's all right. I'm going to let that lie. I'm going to let him go. So where Rummy, were we? Chris. Now, there is also a new, and this I only discovered about a year or two ago, that there is another socioeconomic group all by itself. Oh, yes. And it is F. 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 That might be quite trendy to be F. Well, it's not. It's quite the opposite. Well, what is the F? Socioeconomic group F, all by themselves, stand alone, is farmers. Farmers? Farmers. And when you think it through, you see, you can see how that impacts on the schedules, because they have their own programme, don't they, on Radio 4? I don't know. I've never been that far down the dial. It's, it's the other way. It's up its left. And it's, yeah. Um, and, it, and it's at 6, 5, 5.45 in the morning. What do uh, they talk about? Oh, God, they talk about artificially inseminating animals. They talk about how to wash, uh, what to do to stop having blue tongue. See, um, if you'd said that, right, yes. you would have got letters of complaint about that. Which bit? Artificially inseminating animals. Yes, there would have been complaints there. Can you get complaints anymore? I uh, haven't had any here to date. Um, I believe there were complaints. There have certainly been complaints against me. At every radio station I've worked at since 1980. Well, you should make it your um, your raison. Uh, coming out with a lot of Del Boy French sayings tonight. Yes. Your raison d'être. Yes. Uh, to get a complaint here. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I mean, how far can you push <clears throat> it, right? If you've got no boundaries, mm. that should be a challenge. Well, um, I'll give it some thought. Uh, we did. Uh, we did a number of things which would certainly have had you hauled off the air and probably imprisoned. No, not imprisoned, that's obviously an exaggeration, but we did a number of things here that certainly you wouldn't hear anywhere else. And, and one of the things that we have to keep doing here, I think, is make use of the freedoms that we have and do things that you don't hear on other radio stations. And curiously enough, just you know, me casually pausing and faffing around a bit with the computer... And there being a slight silence when you sort of muttered something and I muttered something. Um, I've worked at radio stations where that would have to be logged. It's like a holiday for you then, isn't it, this job? No, it's hard work. You could just sit back and, like, have a, have a giggle. Just quickly, a few emails coming in. Um, uh, so we've got... Uh, Matt is listening in Exmouth, East Devon. Which Terrific. When, you see, whenever I see that, I think of... I, you know, I immediately think of uh, rocky coastal shores... Uh, Alison is listening in Thatcham in Berkshire, which is near Newbury, which is a nice oh, little leafy that part. That needs bombing, that place. But Newbury does. All of it. Most of Berkshire, except for the golf courses. Are there lots of golf courses in Berkshire? Of course there is Berkshire. I, I've got this question for you. Sunningdale? I've got this question, which I have asked before. How many... What do you think is the par for Land's End to John O'Groats? Oh. I know. Isn't that a good one? That's interesting. I could, I can work that out. I, I'm sure you can. And I'll work that out. And if I'm still awake, I'll give you the answer. If I'm still awake, I'll listen. Absolutely. All right. Ch -ch -ho. Uh, ciao. Ciao and so forth. Excellent. So I'll just allow that caller to go on his way. And just ahead of the news, is that you? It's not, is it? <laughs> Is that you? <laughs> and silence came back the answer. Fantastic. Um, a reminder, our switchboard number is 01243 55 60 60. Uh, email address is studio at playradiouk.com. Detcom? Detcom, yes, this is 2008. Studio at playradiouk.com. Oh, right, it's you, Hugh. This is... What? This is this somebody is else. Phil. Phil, hello, Phil. Phil. Oh, right, thank God for that. It's working, it's doing that dropping in and out business for a minute. Oh, anyway. Yes. Uh, well, I've got a joke for you. Excellent. Um, that's on the subject of uh, omnipotence. Yes. We were talking about uh, God and what have you earlier. Yeah. Uh, very powerful people. Yeah. Um, what's the difference between a hospital consultant and God? Okay, I don't know. What is the difference between a hospital consultant and God? That's very, very... In God the is only reputed to be omnipotent. God is only <laughs> reputed to be omnipotent. Yes. <laughs> Whereas <laughs> hospital consultant, of course. That's, ah. that, that's more than a joke, isn't it? That's satire, very nearly. 
All right, well, anyway, I must apologise because I've... Oh, I've, I think I've got this... Uh, so there's a BBC series at the moment about a, a virus, killer virus, kills everybody off. Yeah. Well, I think I've got this. Have you? Have you? Yeah, because oh, yeah, yeah. I came over to Chris's. Yeah. You see, and within... Come, come here, within about half an hour, I just... I just got that that flu feeling. Mm. I started coughing, and that's me. My throat's sore. Oh well. And, uh, I believe that what they say is that if you if you do get a, a BBC drama virus, um, yes. <laughs> instead of going to see your GP, you have to go and see your agent. Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> okay. E either that, or or um, or go out in the street and see if you can find a television camera crew. Yeah. One of those yeah. two things. Nice yeah. talking to you. I've got to do the news now, which I enjoy doing. So will you let me crack on and I'll talk to you again perhaps a little bit later on? Right, OK. You're too good to me. It's just gone 25 past 10 is the time. And it's uh, Play Radio UK. It's Play 2. It's the talk strands of Play 2, which happen Monday to Friday, 8 until 12. Um, yeah, we have a var variety of strands and voices and angles of attack, if you like. Uh, Sunday night, the Sunday roast from 8 until 11 is um, a standalone. Um, I believe the phrase that always gets used is roller coaster. We must come up with a different phrase for that. But the Sunday roast is definitely something that you won't hear anywhere else. Um, uh, from 10 o'clock until midnight tonight, it's myself, Tommy Boyd, uh, and it's just myself and you. Uh, so if you feel able uh, to give me even a line of involvement by... Uh, um, email or possibly on the old skype chat thing that would be uh, gratefully received uh, the question i'm asking amongst many other things well first of all is what do you want to ask is a good one um studio at playradiouk.com is the number um we're talking a bit about radio I'm talking a bit about honesty because steve paul on his show from eight until ten mentioned that his wife found 50 pounds sticking out of a hole in the war machine and he cracked it with his uh, clever little device. but the so we're talking about that, but the question I also want to ask is this. Is there any more difficult question around about this time of year? And you've probably noticed this, but not really got it out in the open, if you know what I mean. Is what to buy at Christmas? What to buy your dad? Play to UK. Headlines. Police today charged 49 protesters who breached the security fence at Stansted Airport, forcing the closure of its runway. Members of the group Plane Stupid, who we were talking to in the Steve Paul show an hour or so ago, which campaigns against climate change and air travel, caused scores of flights to be cancelled and disruption for thousands of passengers. Athens is still rocked by a fourth day of rioting. Troubles flared again following the funeral of a 15-year-old boy. His shooting by police sparked the unrest. The relatives of a paralysed rugby player won't face charges for helping him commit suicide. 23-year-old Daniel James was injured in a training match last year. A former England cricket star has appeared in court accused of drug smuggling. He's Chris Lewis. He was arrested at Gatwick Airport after officials found cocaine worth around £200,000. And finally, Slade's festive classic Merry Christmas Everybody has been banned by a hotel. The 1973 hit's been branded too irritating by guests at the Holiday Inn at Kensington in West London. Play to UK weather. This evening tonight, a few showers continuing along some eastern and western coasts and over Scottish highlands where they'll be wintry. Otherwise, most places dry long clear periods with widespread, perhaps sharp frost forming. Lighter winds inland. Wednesday, a frosty start. Most places dry and sunny. However, a few showers will persist near eastern and western coasts, feeling chilly in gentle northwesterly winds. So, what to buy, Dad? You're up to date on Play 2 UK. Get Play Radio at your fingertips by downloading our exclusive toolbar. Get the latest updates from Play Radio UK. Check out the webcams or find out your local weather. It's even got its very own search engine. Download the toolbar now by clicking on the banner at playradiouk.com. Here she is, my sexy new MP4 player from City Dash Sales. The latest technology giving me music and video wherever I go in a range of stunning colors. All for just 60 pounds. And here are her matching speakers. Cool. Gorgeous. Plus picture keyrings, audio visual baby monitors. Oh, she's so cute. And the baby's kind of nice too. The hottest audio visual equipment straight to your drawer. Just visit city-sales.co.uk. City-sales. Looking good. Sounding great.
My mum logged on to Play Radio UK and treated herself to some amazing Swarovski jewellery from the Scala jewellery. She looks a million dollars. You should see all the other mums and dads' faces when she picks me up from school. She's the classiest mum ever. She said the Scala jewellery is handmade in Italy with Swarovski stones. Mum said if I'm good, she'll buy me some of the Scala jewellery when I'm a bit older. Have a look for yourself. Go to playradiouk.com and click on the Scala jewellery today. In a mini, mini mo, catch a podcast by its toe. If it squeals, let it go. Then pop to play radio, uk.com forward slash podcast and download another show. PlayRadioUK.com forward slash podcast. It's like going to a library without actually having to go. The Tommy Void Show, only on Play2UK. Yeah, so thanks to Paul DL, who has Skyped to say, I'm listening in Bath. Tommy, not in the bath. P.S. Good to hear you live and unleashed. Thanks very much indeed for that. If you ever get a moment, Paul, it'd be nice to hear what you sound like since you're Skyped up and ready to go. Peter Collins is listening in Birmingham. He says, tell you what, Tommy, yes, I live in Birmingham, and you might say, what did I do to deserve that? Well, I ask the question every day, Peter from Birmingham. But, you know, Peter doesn't live in Birmingham, does he? He thinks he lives in Birmingham, but actually, um, that's a bit like saying you live in Africa. Because Birmingham, like London, nobody says they live in London. People say they live in Kensington or they live in Hounslow or Islington uh, or what have you. So um, I always wonder what part of Peter, of Birmingham Peter lives in that he's actually even more ashamed of than living in Birmingham. Because Birmingham has its districts. It has its posh districts like Selly Oak, doesn't it? And it has its not so posh districts like I think Hansworth if I remember rightly. And the thing there is that if you're in a, if you live in a sort of urban environment, working class urban environment, and Birmingham is largely sort of sees its, the Birmingham people see, see themselves as being salt of the earth, um, they would be more mortified to admit to the fact that they live in an upper middle class part of Birmingham than owning up to the fact that they live in a sink estate in Birmingham. You know, um, I had a friend who lived on the border in London between, uh, what was it, it's Twickenham and Isleworth, I think. And he simply boxed and coxed it, whoever he was talking to. If he wanted to impress somebody who was a bit fancy pants, he would say he lived in Twickenham. And if he wanted to Im- impress somebody who he thought was a little bit barra boy, then he'd say he lived in, in, in Isleworth. Um, and I suspect that Peter's much the same as that. You can tell quite a lot about yourself from how you describe where you live so i'm just asking where do you live it it sort of began life as a piece of uh, very mild market research but as with all things in life it's gradually got complicated (laughs) it's got complicated hasn't it here we are now all right analyzing people on the basis of where they say they live uh mick dooley has uh, emailed in thank you for that uh chris has emailed in whereabouts he says hello from 52 degrees north That's silly, isn't it? Well, however, it's probably true. <clears throat> Mick Dooley, uh, Play UK East of England correspondent. Thank you, Mick. He says, I live in a village in Norfolk called Freethorpe, which he puts in brackets full of inbreds. I'm from Scotland originally. About 15 miles from Norwich and 10 miles from Great Yarmouth. Hope it helps you with your market research now. I'm off to bed to catch the podcast. That's cool. Is it possible to listen to... Um, uh, these talk shows Monday to Thursday in bed because now that our laptops are starting to take over our house and my wife and I now will often sit with the television on and the pair of us rather pathetically perched on the sofa <laughs> perched on the sofa with our laptops warming up our knees that is central heating if you've got a laptop on anyway um, but uh, we have been known to go to bed with them there It's not that that much of a revelation about what we get up to in bed, my wife and I, but we have been known to sit there, not just late at night, but sometimes first thing in the morning. If you wake up a bit early and it's too early to really sort of get up and get going, we'll take a cup of tea (laughs) back to bed (laughs) and sit there and faff with our laptops. So 
one of the things that, of course, if this form of radio, as this form of radio expands and develops, uh, is being able to access it in all the rooms of the house and also when you're travelling uh, on the train, but even more likely when you're travelling in your car, van or lorry, whatever. OK, but at the moment, I would be really interested to discover if anybody has cracked it into a listening habit of having the laptop by the bed. I know there are quite a few listeners who do have Wi-Fi radios. Um, since we're just interested in finding out how people consume this, what gets called a product, if you're an advertiser, um, is which room you have your Wi-Fi radio in? Or do you carry it around the house with you? I know one of them is, has got rechargeable, is rechargeable, and it's said to be splash-proof, so that's clearly designed to be consumed in the bathroom. And if, if I had to choose one room in the house, and I was only around the radio in one room, um, sadly, inevitably, it probably would be in the kitchen. Where, when oh, It's nice to have the radio on, isn't it? Go downstairs in the morning, cup of tea, radio on, um, potter into the kitchen, middle of the day, Saturday, Sunday, to make something, radio on. Um, but bathroom, don't know about you, my idea of little added luxury in the bath is a radio on the side. So I've got one of those wind-up radios. Haven't got around to a Wi-Fi yet. Will, obviously. Um, but the bedroom. Bedroom, bathroom, kitchen. If I had to choose between... Mm, definitely not the living room. I mean, that's not a big player for me. How about you? Uh, studio at playradio.com is the email address. That's studio at playradiouk dot com studio at playradiouk.com and the skype address is play dot radio dot uk once again switchboard oh one two four three fifty five sixty sixty uh thanks for your email chris uh from the tommy boyd shrine which is a website a loyal one a better joke about god they say what's the difference between kelvin mckenzie and god Answer, God doesn't think he's Kelvin McKenzie. Kelvin. Do we, do we all know who we're talking about here, Kelvin McKenzie? Anyway, we'll get back, we'll come back to him. Um, the, uh, there's a George Carlin YouTube clip on soft language, which has been sent to me by Mark B, who has always been good for providing nice little audio clips in the past. So what I'm going to do is uh, provide you with some important information, particularly about Mike Mendoza's show, and also some important information about Loaded magazine, which is uh, one of the sponsors of Sunday Roast on a Sunday from 8 until 11 on Play 2. And I'm looking at Loaded at the moment, and there are some comely girls in it, but there are also some interesting ideas about presents for Dad. And that's one of the things that I'm going to kick around a little bit with you, if you'll pardon me setting the agenda there because what do you buy your dad from about the age of five six seven it's a huge thing when you're that age what you're gonna buy your dad you know this huge thing in the house <laughs> your dad <laughs> okay you you want to spend a, a reasonable amount of your pocket money on on him because you love him desperately and you want his approval enormously but then as the years turn into decades you know once you're grown up what the f do you buy your dad and Loaded Magazine's come up with some uh, interesting suggestions, which we'll get to very shortly. PlayRadioUK.com, part of the Something Corporation. Play 2 UK's talk shows are expanding. The Sunday Roast from 8pm, radio you won't hear anywhere else. Mondays from 8, myself, Tommy Boyd with at 10. Catherine Catt live from her dungeon. The Mistress on Art, Theatre, Opera and The Boudoir. Tuesdays, Steve Paul and Ali tell it like it is. Wednesday and Thursday, Mike Mendoza, Gadgets, Current Affairs and Life. And there's more to come. Check it out. Talk on Play 2 UK. Want to see Wonderbra star Katie Green, Lee Francis, the man behind Avid Merrion and Keith Lemon, Sunday League Madness, Jimmy Carr, 2009's Best Games Reviewed, and brand new Jennifer Ellison picks. For the fittest women, the biggest celebs, and the loudest laughs, get loaded. New issue on sale now. Play 2 UK, The Tommy Boyd Show. So I've had a look at Matt's YouTube clip, and it's a comedian called George Carlin. Just to describe, he's on stage, inevitably the stage is behind him, behind him is dark, and he's wearing a, 
uh, a black top, a kind of a granddad vest, but he's one of those people who manages to look both street and yet well groomed at the same time because he's got just enough of that beard and it's a, a, a gingerish, fair, brown, light brown beard. Um, his hair is short and although it's receding, um, he doesn't look as though he's going baldy baldy because he's got it cut just yay and he's got a drawn face, a bit of a Samuel Beckett look about him, quite an intense man. So we'll get to that in just a second. Um, if you've got any bits of audio lying around on your PC that are worth us listening to, we do have no-nos, I suppose. We don't like the C word very much, if you can avoid that, unless it's absolutely integral to the piece and it has something profound to commend it in order to balance out the for me i am a bit prudish about that but anyway uh our email address is studio at playradiouk.com so question uh presents for dad for example and loaded magazine is obviously taking a pop at dads here because for example number four they suggest a watch called the fathom this heavy duty watch and there's a picture of it looks like one of those chronographs if you remember this heavy duty watch can cope with depths of over a thousand feet and you'll never have to wind it up because it automatically charges. The Eagles of Death Metal are one of their main customers, which frankly makes the Fathom one top-notch wanker. <laughs> Loaded is for boys who think their dad's a bit of a wanker, okay? I've got teenage boys, I'm sure. A lot of the time they think I'm a bit of a wanker. Or they like to think I'm a bit of a wanker. Or they like to raise their eyebrows at each other and go, wanker dad. Um, and probably even sometimes make out to their friends that their dad's a bit of a wanker. And it doesn't bother me because I know they love me and blah, blah, blah. And it's part of your job as a dad when your boys are reaching sort of loaded magazine age is to be a bit of a wanker. So number three is checked slippers. There's something reassuringly British, they say, about the slipper. And there's a picture here of those you know the slippers. Slippers? Who wears slippers? Anyway, they say these bad boys are spot on for the master of the house. Phrase master of the house needs to be in big italics, doesn't it? What else is there? Um, they suggest a hand drill, which is... Yeah. Driving gloves! Black leather driving gloves, yeah. That's the sort of thing you think your dad is dull and mundane and predictable enough to cherish driving gloves these are black leather driving gloves and the uh, caption these are 39 pounds you know with the open back but why why did they think going back gloves were so important to people when motoring in the 1930s and 40s there was a compartment on the passenger side just for gloves and we still call it the glove compartment even though it contains shit and old mcdonald's polystyrene empty mugs and uh, sweet wrappers and there but we still call it the glove compartment and driving gloves always were backless weren't they with holes for the knuckles what's that about anybody no no chance anyway they say the old man will look a right chap <laughs> with this handy gift but you know semi-seriously good listener as your dad gets older which of course they all do Every year it gets marginally more difficult to think of anything to buy the fella, doesn't it? A joke thing. You can buy a Maggie Thatcher nutcracker because almost certainly your old man hated Maggie Thatcher. And so the idea of being able to stick a walnut up a dress... <laughs> That's how it works. Um, when she's standing with her hands clasped in front of her um a little bit like ronaldo standing in a wall you know what i'm talking about and her legs are akimbo very akimbo and the walnut or the hazelnut evidently go up the skirt and then you grab her by the ankles and you squeeze the ankles together and you get nuts so that's a, a thought for dad i once bought my dad because he was a fan of john wayne when he, when, when he was about 50-something, I suppose, I was 20, I bought him a cowboy hat and a gun. And he enjoyed it. He put the hat on and he walked around for a bit on Christmas morning with his gun going pop, pop. So, I don't know, if my dad was still alive... Ah, my dad was still alive. That is a, 
There's a heavy sentence. If my dad was still alive, ah, what would I buy him? I don't know. I don't know. Very distracting. I'm very distracted. I'm now. So, uh, thanks to Matt who has uh, emailed in this from YouTube. George Carlin, it is, and he's talking about soft language. One of the reasons, one of the reasons is because we were using that soft language, that language that takes the life out of life. And it is a function of time. It does keep getting worse. I'll give you another example. Sometime during my life, sometime during my life, toilet paper became bathroom tissue. I wasn't notified of this. No one asked me if I agreed with it. It just happened. Toilet paper became bathroom tissue. Sneakers became running shoes. False teeth became dental appliances. Medicine became medication. Information became directory assistance. The dump became the landfill. Car crashes became automobile accidents. Partly cloudy became partly sunny. Motels became motor lodges. House trailers became mobile homes. Used cars became previously owned transportation. <laughs> room service became guest room dining. And constipation became occasional irregularity. Yeah. When I was a little kid, if I got sick, they wanted me to go to the hospital and see the doctor. Now they want me to go to a health maintenance organization. A GP. Or a wellness center. Yeah. To consult a health care delivery professional. Poor people used to live in slums. Now the economically disadvantaged occupy substandard housing in the inner cities. <laughs> and they're broke. They're broke. They don't have a negative cash flow position. They're fucking broke. Because a lot of them were fired. You know, fired, management wanted to curtail redundancies in the human resources area. So many people are no longer viable members of the workforce. Yeah. Smug, greedy, well-fed white people have invented a language to conceal their sins. It's as simple as that. The CIA doesn't kill anybody anymore. They neutralize people. <laughs> or they depopulate the area. The government doesn't lie and engages in disinformation. The Pentagon actually measures nuclear radiation in something they call sunshine units. Israeli murderers are called commandos. Arab commandos are called terrorists. Contra killers are called freedom fighters. Well, if crime fighters fight crime and firefighters fight fire, what do freedom fighters fight? They never mention that part of it to us, do they? Never mention that part of it. That's good. We're going to come back to that a bit later on because there's another couple of minutes of it. I enjoyed that. That is good, isn't it? And, that, and you think about that and that is so true, isn't it? That we uh, do stump up great big words to... But we do it all the time, don't we? All of us do it all the time. Um, we, we just kind of dress up whatever it is we want to express with the most formal... On occasions, with the most formal language we can... That's at our disposal in order to make it seem more authentic. That's part of the reason, I think, why my wife and I, and probably lots of people, are now rather obsessed or um, are, are forming a habit with their laptop. Because anything you do on a laptop looks utterly authentic. The other day I was trying to write something using a, a pen and a piece of paper. And no matter how I wrote it, it looked like crap. You know, it looked schoolboyish. It looked... It looked inauthentic. It looked wrong. Sketchy, scratchy. Ugh. I kept crossing it out. That's that. Good. Up on the laptop. Up you go. Word document. Nice. Draw. Yes. Circle there. Yes. Do that. Text box underneath it. It was still bollocks what I was writing. But I was able to make it look authentic. Because this business of soft language now is big in our lives. Because we use this sort of decoration, this set decoration of anything that we want to try and represent that the internet gives us easily to make whatever it is we're trying to communicate, whatever it is we're trying to get across to somebody else, often just back to ourselves, seem somehow more valuable than it really is. We like George Carlin, don't we? Thank you for that, Matt. If at home you've got a little bit of audio, it might be a, a, a YouTube thing that tickles you. 
It's better if it's predominantly audio, for obvious reasons, but I don't mind. I'll do my best to describe it. Where are people listening this evening? Anne it says, uh, I live in a village a few miles from Barnstable on the North Devon coast. So that's good. Thank you for that, Anne. So we're doing quite well in the West Country at the moment. Uh, we've got Bath. We've got a couple of Devonians who are listening. Oh, I won't, no, don't do the accent. That's so patronising. I hate that. Except when people do the Welsh one. That seems about right. Nick says, uh, great, li- uh, great show. Long-time listener, first-time emailer. I'm listening in Swindon, Wiltshire. That is Nick G. Thank you for that, Nick. I'm listening in Pool in Dorset. So West Country coming out very strong with things. This is Dave. He says, I listen to radio talk shows shows because they're entertaining and informative and I can get on with living whilst I'm listening. Yeah. I'm just going to pause that there for a second, good listener. I sometimes think you don't want your radio, whether it's old radio or new media or whatever, Sometimes you don't want it to be so essential that you have to sit down and listen and take notes kind of thing. You kind of almost want it to be able to go on in the semi-background of your life. Yeah? I mean, and, and then on occasions, and I'm just guessing here, once every 20 minutes, for something to happen that really takes your full attention, like a joke, because we all like to laugh, or a piece of information that's useful to you, something you can build into what you do or think. By the way, whilst we're talking about radio, don't you hate it when, it always seems to be on the BBC, they interview somebody about something, and then they say, so what's the message? (laughs) And the expert at the other end says, the message is, cut down on your salt, or the message is, drive safely. You know, that. Because it does, that has no impact whatsoever and it doesn't change us at all whatsoever but there are a few people the green ink brigade listening who think good yes that'll make them eat less salt the idiots good yes that'll make them drive more safely those idiots but what i'm saying is i'm wondering whether sometimes it's nice just to have the radio going on in the background that's how i use it to be quite honest uh, but occasionally i'll just get drawn to it because i think there's a chance of something that might make me laugh Drawn to it there's something that might just have a little pleasant impact, profitable impact, you know, profound impact on my life. Uh, and sometimes I like heat. If I hear two people having a bit of a difference of opinion, then I'm drawn to that. It's like when you're in the pub and everybody's chatting away happily to each other, but there's a married couple over in the far corner and they're having a go at each other quietly or in the supermarket. And you get that elderly couple, and they're just goading each other as they go up and down the aisles with their trolley. You know? I find that. I'm drawn to that. Because I think all of us actually do walk towards the sound of gunfire. But anyway, just chewing the fat. Chewing the fat over over what comes out of your speakers on your laptop or your PC, what comes into your earphones on your iPod, your MP3 player with the podcasts, which are going very well, by the way, if you're a podcaster. We just uh, download, had downloaded our 100,000th podcast of the talk stuff that we do here, um, which is in a very short time, is everybody's very, very pleased. So thank you for that, if you're a podcaster. And don't feel as though you're left out, because those email addresses are still live for you. And I get quite a few emails from people saying, I've just listened to, and it was something that was talked about two or three weeks ago, um... And they email me, not so much at studioplayradiouk.com. Podcasters, you should email me at tommy.playradiouk.com. Okay, which is, that comes straight to my uh, little desk at, um, at Play, okay? Who else is listening? Yeah, in Paul in Dorset, this is Dave again. He says, I don't listen to music stations so much. Maybe because I'm in my 40s and so I probably need a different kind of stimulus. I watch what I want to watch on TV and so thankfully that doesn't tie me down like it can with some people. Uh, Great to hear you and good luck with all your broadcasting. Thanks for that. Another West Country type. Uh, This is Simon who's listening in Penzance, Cornwall. Hey, we're thick with the West Country. This is interesting. Why would that... mm, Accident? 
don't yeah. know. Obviously, they don't all know each other. I believe that uh, men of <laughs> men of women men and women of Cornwall don't talk to Devonians because I think Cornwall likes to think of itself as almost being a separate country. Um, anyway, Simon, you will know. He says I listen on my laptop, and I often have it on in the bedroom at night. I'm usually working while I listen, but I have been known to lie in bed and listen in the same way as I might listen to ordinary radio. Well, that's a credential. Because at the moment, utilising this kind of new media radio is uh, avowedly... Avowedly? What kind of a word's that? <laughs> you meant definitely, didn't you, Tom? Yeah. We'll splice in definitely later. <laughs> OK. Is definitely more marginally more inconvenient than actually just flipping on a radio. You've got to fire up your laptop, PC, or download your iTunes, whatever. That's no great fag, because you can do it automatically. Um, but fire up your PC, fire up your laptop... Uh, find the website. That's not too difficult. Hit the uh, Listen Now button. Um, but then, of course, you see, you might be on your laptop PC anyway, thinking to yourself, this is a very silent exercise. I wonder if there's some crap I can listen, <laughs> listen to. So maybe that is another one of these two-way stretches that people talk about. So thanks very much indeed for that, Simon. Where are you listening? And how are you listening? And is this something you can listen to? In bed, studio at playradiouk.com is the email address. And what to give your dad once he reaches a certain age? Let's say, shall we? Wow, blimey. 37, I'm going to say. After 37, he doesn't want CDs anymore, does he? Probably not. No. Um, if he has any hobbies, he's probably old enough by 37 to have all the kit he needs. You know? Um... After the age of 37, he doesn't really want to look trendy any longer and you don't want to buy him socks and a Marks and Spencer's plain light blue shirt. So what to buy, what to buy your dad, your dad, after the age of 37? Uh, studio at playradiouk.com. You can Skype play.radio.uk and switchboard number if you fancy that, 01243 55 60 60. Well, uh, play the last two minutes of that. Was it George Carlin talking about soft language? Dan the Man says, Audio for Tommy Boyd, it's wicked. Excellent. I've got the link. Thank you for that, Dan the Man. Um, we'll listen to some important information against, uh, about, against, about Mike Mendoza. Um, uh, and uh, then we'll come back and we'll take a listen to Chili Chili Beef. Thanks, Dan. If you've got a little bit of audio that you can easily whoosh, onto uh, an attachment and buzz over, studio at playradiouk.com. This is fun, isn't it? Just sort of chewing the fat, you and me. Playradiouk.com, part of the Something Corporation. Play 2 UK's talk shows are expanding. The Sunday Roast from 8pm, radio you won't hear anywhere else. Mondays from 8, myself, Tommy Boyd with at 10. Catherine Catt live from her dungeon. The Mistress on Art, Theatre, Opera and The Boudoir. Tuesdays, Steve, Paul and Ali tell it like it is. Wednesday and Thursday, Mike Mendoza, Gadgets, Current Affairs and Life. And there's more to come. Check it out. Talk on Play 2 UK. Broadcasting live to the UK. UK. News, information, entertainment and the best music from the past 40 years. This is Play 2 UK. Tommy Boyd. Call 01243 55 60 60. Email studio at playradiouk.com. Skype play.radio.uk. Now, live from the south coast of England, the Tommy Boyd Show, only on Play 2 UK. Yes, it's live. It's 11 o'clock UK time. It's a Tuesday night. It's cold and it's sharp and it's damp, probably pretty much everywhere UK-wise. And uh, we are, however many days it is away from Christmas. And one of the things we're kicking around is what to buy Dad for Christmas. Because there's so much... There's, there's so, it's such a profound relationship between you and your dad, isn't it, good listener? Yes, yes. And um, still so hard to hug them? Yes, yes. <laughs> they still stiffen slightly? Yes, yes. As for the kiss? Hmm... If you're lucky. So Christmas. Christmas is a time when you can be a bit more sentimental. And you can maybe, you may be tempted to give your dad something just a little bit more profound than a cardigan. Wow, who gives the dad a cardigan? But you know what I mean. Maybe a book or something. Something. But it's such a huge thing that in the end, we chicken out. 
and buying a bottle of port with a piece of cheese. <laughs> so we're talking about that, studio at playradiouk.com, and also receiving thank you very much indeed. Sonny's also sent in a clip, which we'll uh, have a listen to in just a second. We're halfway through George Carlin banging on brilliantly, brilliantly, about how the world, the world of the white man anyway, has come up with all these soft phrases to describe um, slightly unpleasant events. He started off by saying that toilet paper became bathroom tissue. I'll just see who this is on the line. Yo! Hello? Hello? Is that Tommy Void? Yes, it is. Who's this? It's Neil. Hey, Neil. Hello. Hello. I just thought I'd uh, ring you up and say that I used to talk to you... Oh, well didn't talk to you. I used to listen to you years ago on uh, the talk radio station you were on. Okay. And now I'm listening to you on my iPhone in bed. Beautiful. Uh, we, well, me and my wife are laying here together. We listen to you every week. Sweet. Um, well, and I'd just like to say that uh, we still think of you. Can I ask a, a funny question? Yeah, you can. Why? Why? Yeah. What? What is it that? What is it that you like? Because uh, you're human. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That is that is that is it, isn't it? Because I can be quite funny, and I can be quite political, and I can sometimes be quite confrontational. But, but basically, you, you sort of half think you know me a bit. Are you gone? He's gone. Gone back to listening. Did he say on his iPhone? Yeah, oh, God, yeah, that's the other thing. Of course, now that mobile phones are getting internet enabled, um, that's going to be happening more and more. And I don't think it costs you a packet. I don't know. I don't know. But there's, there's somebody. So he and his wife up in bed listening on... This is Neil and his wife at home, up in bed, listening on their phone. Blimey. Now technology moves and changes. Right, now, where's this chili, chili, chili beef clip that uh, Dan the Man sent in? Let's see whether we can have a listen to this. Here we go. Chinese on Friday and maybe on Sunday too. I like it hot and spicy, but it makes me go to the loo. Give me the menu and the phone. I want it delivered to my home. Give me the menu and the phone. Make sure you've got some cash at home. Chili, chili beef, bum, 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 bum. Chili, chili beef. Bum, 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 bum. Chili, chili beef bum, 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 bum. Don't you steal my chili beef All oh, the Chinese, they know my number They know how to get to my house Always clear the plates away Or you're in courage, a mouse Give me the number and the phone I want it delivered to my home Give me the number and the phone Make sure you've got some cash at home. Chili, chili beef, bum 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 bum. 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 <laughs> nice little clip sent in by Dan the Man. Thank you for that. It's called Chili, Chili Beef. Um, it's politically incorrect to say it, but I can. That for some reason Mexicans. There's something intrinsically funny about Mexicans, and yet it doesn't seem to pull you into the area of any kind of racism um, to, to employ them as some kind of a comic prop. Let's remember that John Cleese, one of the most intelligent, gifted, and liberal uh, scriptwriters, comedy actors, comedy writers there's ever been, ever, had a comedy Spaniard hey, in Faulty Towers, Ben. Uh, not sure you could do it now, I don't know. But we still seem to be able to laugh at Mexicans. There's something slightly unknowingly pompous about them, isn't there? So thank you for that little mariachi clip. Nice one from Dan the Man. What 
else have we got? Sonny has also sent in a clip, which we'll get to in just a second. Thank you for that. Uh, this from Jason. He's never been so insulted in all his life, and all he asked was for you to play a record for him. <laughs> I think this is me having a go at a BBC listener. Shall we have a listen? Um, uh, is that Tony? It says here. Bear with me just a second. I have to perform a couple of bits of How's Your Father in order to get these clips of audio. This is great fun, isn't it? Right, here we go. Good evening, line one. We're just about through, but we have... Is that Tony? Tony, yes. Yeah, this is Steve, who you insulted earlier. Yes. OK. I've never been so insulted or humiliated on a radio station before. Excellent. You, you can either apologise, have this going to the top, you've tackled the wrong guy this time. I am sorry, but I rang up with a, in jest and in fun, and you humiliated me. For no reason other than I phoned in a, te a telephone phoning programme. Uh, are you the bloke who went on about Zimbabwe? No, I'm not. I'm the guy that had a challenge to, to get something done on every radio station, BBC radio station, and you insulted me. Yes, well, it was a pretty, it was a pretty dumb it thing to do. what the thing was. Yes, you had no right to insult me. Yes, I have. No, you have not. I certainly have. You were wasting my time. You're a phone-in programme. Yes, not a request show. No, but... <laughs> Okay, all you had what to do. What do you mean, okay? All you had to do is politely say, no, thank you, I can't help you. Well, what you were doing was silly. No, it may be silly to some. Yes, okay. it is silly, it's silly to everybody. How is it that every other station was very polite, some even did interviews? Nobody. I was well, because they're gone. I was humiliated. Because they're well, But what you were doing was humiliating yourself. No, you humiliated me by calling me sick and a moron. And as I know that that programme has to be recorded, it will be reviewed tomorrow unless you apologise for humiliating me. All right, shall I tell you what your problem is? No, I, have, I don't have a problem except... Shall I tell you, shall I tell, shall I tell you, you what your... You have to apologise for humiliating shall I, me. So, not in a thousand years, and I'll tell you what your problem is. All right, you've got too much time on your hands. Now, go away and bother other radio stations and leave us in peace. Right, OK. Thank That's you. Fair, yes. Fair enough. Do you your worst. You don't wish to apologise. You have got too much time on do your you hands. you wish to apologise? Go, I just answered that question, and I'll give you another piece of advice. Go and do something useful. Stop wasting your time and everybody else's you time. Get paid for Go and you. do something useful. Right, okay. If you can't take, right? If you, I, be, I bet this is me live again. I better just say what this is. This was um, um, a few years ago. I think it was a BBC radio station, and what this bloke was doing, I think I remember rightly, uh, is he was he said he came, he came through on a phoning program I was doing, and he said that. Uh, he was ringing every radio station in the country and asking them to play a certain record so that he could set a world record for being the most, for having the most requested requests go out. And that was it. And I thought it was a bloody waste of time. You know, why don't people go and do the shopping for old people or, you know, do something ap actually use. Why do, why do people do these things? I blame the media up to a point, but this bloke, he deserved blaming, I thought, because he couldn't understand that he was just wasting everybody's time. Most of all his own. Anyway, let's have another little tiny listen. This is me going on about one here. I'll take, take a, joke and I can take a, a bit a, of tongue-in-cheek humour and you've sat around now radio and you've fumulated and you've decided that you're going to waste more radio stations' time why is it wasting time? Because you're this? wasting, you're wasting everybody's time. What? You're wasting your time, ring, you're wasting people's time ringing radio stations, asking them to play records you don't want, you twit. Aren't you? Somebody wanted it. You are wasting radio stations' no, time. I'm not wasting their time. Ringing them up, I asking them to play records you don't want. I am not wasting their time. Let me ask That's you this question. For. You ask, you answer me this question honestly with your hand on your heart. Right? Yeah. Are you ringing radio stations and asking them to play records you don't want to hear? No. 
Now you're lying because that's no, what that, that's I what said, you said. I've heard, that's I've, what you that's what you said you were doing. I you fool. I've heard it a lot of times. I'd rather hear something else. You challenge me yes. to hear that record. You're ringing radio stations, asking them to play records you don't want to hear. But that doesn't mean that you have to insult me. You're wasting our time. And humiliate me. You're wasting you, our time. Okay. So all you have to. What do, do you mean? Okay. That's okay. not okay. You, all you have it to, is not okay to waste people's time. Is it a waste of time to humiliate them on the radio? If you're wasting my time, yes. It's not, it's not your time. You are That's wasting funny. my time. You're ringing up asking me to play a record you don't bloody want to hear, man. Does that matter to you? He was ringing, sorry, it's me again. <laughs> I remember this bloke. I thought, my, I thought my job was on the line again, having a go at him. His thing was, he lived somewhere, obviously, we all do, but he was ringing radio stations that he couldn't listen to, right? <laughs> so He's in Lowestoft or somewhere, right? <laughs> He's got nothing better to do than try and set the world record for having the most requests played on radio stations. So he's ringing radio stations, right, in Glasgow, in, a, in Tavistock, right, and he's asking for records and then saying, are oh, you going to play? And they go, yeah, and that's it. He doesn't listen to it. He doesn't hear it. He's not doing it for charity, as I remember, which is a, a good thing. On many occasions, but on some occasions, people excuse their behaviour by attaching it to some sort of charity. You know, and I can never understand why people want to do sponsored parachute jumps when they could just as easily do sponsored going and getting a little old lady shopping or wallpapering a living room for her or something like that. You know, something that is actually useful as well as raising money. And it's because actually what they want to do is draw attention to themselves. And obviously I'm not tiring everybody who does charity work with that brush. You don't misunderstand me, and I know you wouldn't, good listener, but there is the Green Ink Brigade. Just have another last listen to, to this ding-dong. It's quite a good ding-dong. Yes, I don't want my time wasted. Then, then you don't... Life is short. Life is precious every moment of it. And when a man rings up and asks for a record he doesn't want to hear, he's wasting my life. But you humiliated me. Because you're wasting my time. So you humiliate anybody that rings you up. And wastes my time on purpose. No, it wasn't a case of wasting your time. I was time checking out what you were doing, it, and what you were doing was wasting my radio, time. How is it all the other radio stations... You've asked me that question, and I give, I'm not going to bother to give you the same answer. No, why do you need Why, why do you need you to keep repeating else, yourself? Why don't you let somebody else speak? And let I'm letting my, you speak. Let me have my 30 seconds instead of it going on all the time. Stop repeating yourself, then. Right, then I ask you this question, OK? And let me finish it before you jump in. Well, have I heard it before? Not all. Of it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you jump in. Why have all the other radio stations... I've answered that. No, you have not. Yes, I have. Wait until I finish. I've the answered the question. Then if you've heard the question, you won't need to answer it. Now listen to the question. Why have all the other radio stations I've phoned in, I've had a chuckle about it, have a laugh, some have even done recorded interviews, I've learnt a lot about the local radios. I've listened to all the stations Because around. they're idiots. They've all been very Because nice, they're gormless. Except for you. Because they're brainless. You're telling you Because brain they're desperate for anybody to ring them. So, yeah, and you're insulting them now. Yes. Yeah, so I'll, 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 I'll thank you for that, Jason. What I just said about all those other radio stations, dear listener, is true, isn't it? It's true. They are gormless, they are idiots, and they're desperate for anybody to ring up and ask for a record. And they're just encouraging people like that, poor man. I say poor man, he was a bit of a pain, wasn't he? But they kind of encourage people like that to do things like that when they could be doing something useful. He could have been giving his missus a cuddle, couldn't he? He could have been writing a letter to one of his children, telling him what, telling them what he really thought of them or something. I know we don't do things like that very much, but for God's sake, when people fall into this trap of trying to get themselves on the media and do everything they can to get themselves on the media, um, they, they, it's a, a new form of religion. And I was insulting his religion, which is the media. Nice one. Thank you for that, Jason. Whew. Calm down, calm down. <laughs> calm down. It's just you and me this evening, good listener, uh, wherever you are. Uh, and I'm taking emails from people just saying where they are and how they're listening. It's quite interesting. Because I had visions of you at home with a PC, probably, or maybe a laptop. Um, but we've already had one call from somebody, Neil, who's listening in bed with his wife on the iPhone. 
I presume that means with little earphones. Or can you get a loudspeaker up on your posh phone? I don't know. I'd be interested. Thank you for that. Uh, let's take a Skype call, shall we? This is uh, from Pair of Cons Radio Cast. Hello. Hello. It's uh, Zara. Zara, I wanted to talk to you. You're you're a regular, just to fill in the new listeners. But nice to hear your voice again. Hello. Hello. Nice to hear your voice too. I just thought I'd give you a call because um, you sound a little bit lonely. On the contrary. Um, when you have two or three voices in the studio, there's a tendency to talk amongst yourselves. Yeah. I, f- I feel that just me being here by my own means that I'm, I'm, I'm really talking to the listener. So actually you prefer it because it gives you more time to say what you really want to say and be a bit more direct. It's a different dimension. And also if you're yeah. listening and you have two people in a studio talking to each other, often yeah. the, the thing that you'd like to say get said by somebody else that's true i prefer it if it's just you i'm enjoying myself i hope it it's another dimension to the talk stuff that we're doing on this um on this uh, radio station i'm fascinated by this zara i can see <laughs> you and you're looking great but i can see mm-hmm. behind you a groaning bookcase yeah and i wonder if your webcam can come off its little clip and you can just take it a bit closer to your bookcase because, you know, you can find that. Is it your bookcase? Yeah, it's not. Um, she's lifting it up. Hold on a second. And she's taking it closer. It's to her my. Bookcase. The camera's actually on my laptop. Yeah, I'm with you. There's the so you've so kindly taken to... your laptop over to your bookcase. And I'm just, yeah. Uh, it's not going to be. I wonder if it's possible for me to read the books on your bookcase. This is fantastic. You can just hold it. Hard for me. I can't yeah, really no, you, see what you can see. Yeah, no, you just hold it right steady there. Now I can't quite get the print okay. to resolve. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Uh, oh, wait a minute. I'm looking at the wrong way around. Hold on. What can I see? Michael Foucault. Yeah, Michel Foucault. Michel Foucault, thank you. What's that? Is that good? These are Madness cl- and civilization, yeah. Bloody hell. Keep moving it. Uh, go, go right. If you can. This way. Yeah, that's it. That's good. This is fantastic. I can... Hold on a second. Something <laughs> something therapy. The gift of therapy, yeah. Okay. Irvin Yellow. Are you the Thank one... You are you the one for me? Therapist, yeah, that's rubbish. Therapist as Life yeah. Coach is another book I can see. Yeah. This is very interesting for you and me. Stay with us, listener. We'll be back to you in just a second. <laughs> this is... Really interesting. Can you spin the webcam round now so I can take a look at the rest of the room? Do you mind? Um, <clears throat> um, well, it's a bit messy that way. Oh, obviously. Everything's messy. Whose home isn't messy? Uh, that's the... I'll show you a bit of the room. Okay, yeah. That's the mirror. Yeah. Okay. This is the so... Old painting. Voyeuristic. Now, there's a very interesting abstract painting there. Who did that? It's about... That's one I did some years ago. This is your artwork. It is. That's very eye-catching. So it's 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 sort of ochre and brown, isn't it? Um, It's about, what, four or five feet high and about two, three feet across? It's not quite that big. That's just an illusion. All right. Okay, well, isn't all art an illusion? We must uh, get cat. <laughs> hey, I've had an incredible idea. Have you ever heard Catherine Cat on a Monday, the art critic? Yes, I have heard her, yeah. I wonder what she thinks. What's your idea? I don't, I, I've got loads of ideas with uh, all my listeners, but, um, but you especially. Really? Yes. Do you fancy doing some bits and pieces for us since you're... Uh, with Catherine? Whatever. I, I'll tell you what. That? I want. I, I'm interested in hearing more women. Because because the radio. Can you see ca- that one? She's showing another picture now and again. Well, is it a duck? <laughs> no, it's probably hard for you to see because that one's got glass in it, so it's got. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, and that's another work uh, of yours. Reflection. Is it? Well, that I mean, wasn't me farting, by the way. That's my chair squeaking. No, it squeaks. Okay, yeah, yeah. I, so I don't mind women farting anyway. I always. I usually find it. Very endearing. Um, 
Could I, you, I wasn't farting. I know what? you weren't farting, aren't you? I know. I know. Um, when we finish our chat, if you get a moment, could you email me so that I can send you an email back at some point? That's the thumbs up. I from, will do. From Zara. Yeah. You know, my name's not really Zara, don't you? So it won't come from someone called Zara. I don't mind. You can call yourself anything you okay. like. I, I think it's one of the burden. I, we may have discussed this before, but one of one of life's great burdens is being called what our parents decided to call us even before we were born. And so, one of my ideas is that at the age of sixteen, everybody should be allowed to choose their own name in in life. I think that would be better than getting a tattoo. Yeah, I did. In I did uh, alter my name a couple of times through my childhood, and then I changed my surname in my early twenties. So I kind of did. Mm. Choose. Mm, good. Mm. Good. And what's the email address that I should email you at? Could you email at Tommy yeah. at playradiouk.com? Yes, I can do that. Beautiful. Okay. Have a nice evening. And you. Thank you very much for Skyping. Bye. Bye. Uh, listen, listening, you, good listener, you should um, get involved in this a bit more. Uh, because it's fantastic fun, isn't it? Right. Interesting that she thought I was lonely. I don't know, am I sounding lonely? I'm here all by myself, but I've got you. And I know you're listening, obviously, on the basis of if a tree falls in the forest and there's no one there to hear it, does it make any noise? Um, well, yes, it does, of course. <laughs> uh, but I've got you, and of course... People are emailing, Skyping and calling. So, Peter Collins has emailed, you're a psychic, Tommy. Let me just take this call. Thank you for calling, it's Play Radio. Who's this? Okay, well, somebody tried. Or maybe it was a wrong number. Peter Collins emails, Flipping hell, Tommy, you are a psych... Are you psychic or what? Yes. This is Peter Collins who said that he was listening in Birmingham, and I said that that's because he's faint, faintly embarrassed about where he lives in Birmingham. And I mentioned Hansworth. And he says, Flipping hell, Tommy, are you psychic or what? Yes, I did used to work and live in Hansworth, in Birmingham. But how did you know that I live in Selly Oak? Oh, blimey. That is a bit psychic, isn't it, Peter? Because the two places I mentioned in Birmingham were <laughs> Hansworth and Sally Oak. And he lives in Sally Oak. He says, now, either that was just a good guess on your part, or you're blessed with psychic skills you don't even know about. And yes, I am pissed off in my part of Birmingham I live in, because I live near the university and I can't stand them tosspot students who disturb my sleep every weekend with the drunken antics. Peter from Sally Oak in Birmingham. So how did I know that you live in Selly Oak in Birmingham, Peter? That's a good question, isn't it? Don't know the answer myself. Uh, Play.radio.uk, that's our Skype address. And Boyd's hairy ballsack is back. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. So to monopolise your show and your time... Uh, life's too short and all of that. But I have worked out the answer to the original question. Which was? Uh, what is the par between Land's End and John O'Groats? OK, what would be par for the course? Teeing off yes. at Land's End in sight of the Atlantic Ocean all the way to John um, O'Groats. Go on, then. Yeah. Well, we've done it in two ways. Yes. If you want to do it <laughs> as a... You can do it as uh, taking into account a mixture of par fives and par threes. <laughs> the par fives are at 500 yards dead each, yeah. and the par three is a long challenger at 260. Right. The par would be 15,732. <laughs> if you were to be a bit more conservative in the yeah. way you laid it out yeah. and have it at 440-yard par fours... Yes. To about standard, it would be 13,984. <laughs> what interests me is that the distance is the same. Yes. And but yet. Th I would rather take it at the par fives and the yes. one par three. Oh. I'd take the par fives and gamble a bogey on the 260 yard par three instead of four par fours at 440. But what you haven't taken into consideration is that you'll get a lot of unfortunate lies, such as, for example, 
on the M4. Yes, but you'd get a lot of roll off of that drive, wouldn't you? You would, but on the other hand, you're going to have to nip it off the pavement once you get going through Manchester, for example. Well, I would play, yes. I would play a drive up the motorway <laughs> with a slight fade to get onto the verge, so I could play the second from the grass. Do you know what? If we were one of those attention-seeking, I'll do anything to be on the nine o'clock news type people, we'd do this. It would... I hadn't considered it until this very moment. Right. And I could... think this might be this might be the thing that changes my life, well, Tommy. Could you see whether you reckon it's possible to do this round in under four and a half hours? Well, I think I could get a celeb involved, couldn't I? But both of them would do it. Both of them would up feed up for it, wouldn't they? Both of them would do it, and I think this is doable. Sponsorship from shredded wheat. I, I think it's doable. You're going to have to go across a lot of farmland. Oh. It's, but most of Britain is green, if you view it from above. And you'll probably need to get someone like Titleist on board, because you may lose some balls. Absolutely. You've given me a, an idea. All right, now that's an idea. Okay. That's like a challenge, Annika. Work on it and come back to me. All right, lay off. Nice one. No. Okay, beautiful. Okay, I'm just uh, signing in. If, if you haven't downloaded Skype yet, and you do download it, all you have to do is... Uh, put in our Skype address, play.radio.uk. I'm sure it's on our website somewhere, but I don't know exactly where. And then you, you you click on us as a contact, and then Skype automatically comes through onto our screen. If we're on air, it comes through onto the on-air screen, and we choose to add you. And then you can just buzz up any time you want to. Uh, so, but, but since I'm here on my own tonight, I'm having to do everything at once, which is... Doable. I'm a man. Uh, so occasionally I just get lost lightly there. Um, Peter from Selly Oak in Birmingham is nonplussed as to how it would be that in speculating about which part of Birmingham he lived in, I thought it would be either Hansworth or Selly Oak. And he, it turns out, used to live in Hansworth, now he lives in Selly Oak. And this is going to disturb him for the rest of his life. <laughs> It's actually got me wondering as well. Play to UK. Headlines. Yes, in Greece, Athens is uh, still being rocked by a fourth day now of rioting. Troubles flared again following the funeral of the 15-year-old boy who was shot by police. Well, the relatives of a paralysed rugby player won't face charges for helping him commit suicide. 23-year-old Daniel James was injured in a training match last year. Former England cricket star has appeared in court, accused of drug smuggling. This is Chris Lewis, who was arrested at Gatwick Airport after they found cocaine, allegedly found cocaine worth around £200,000. And Slade's festive classic, Merry Christmas Everybody, has been banned by a hotel in Kensington in West London. It's apparently too low class for the Holiday Inn. Close in UK. <laughs> weather. <laughs> the Holiday Inn. Right, the weather. A uh, few showers will continue along some eastern and western coasts and over Scottish highlands where they'll be wintry. Otherwise, most places dry, long, clear periods, widespread, sharp frost forming overnight for most places. Wednesday, most places frosty but dry and sunny to start. However, a few showers will persist near eastern and western coasts, feeling chilly in gentle northwesterly wind. You're up to date on Play 2 UK. UK.com, part of the Something Corporation. If you want to increase your profits, go the extra mile for your customers, and bring loyalty to your business, then you need Play in Store, in house or online. Play in Store is your personal, made to measure music and marketing tool. Using the latest technologies, you can create your own tailor made music and messaging service, which until now has been unaffordable to everyone but the biggest businesses. Get more from your business by creating your own radio station. Go to playinstore.co.uk Ever imagined yourself behind the wheel of a Ferrari, Aston Martin or Lamborghini? We'll turn it into a reality with an everyman driving experience. Take control of a Mini from £30, a Ferrari from £75 or try the Audi R8 Thrill Experience from £99. We can also offer that extra special gift this Christmas with one of our driving experience vouchers. For more details or to book, call the company with 25 years in the business. Everyman driving experiences on 01 455 841 670 or go to www.everymanracing.co.uk your driving adventure starts here 
With Christmas well and truly upon us, you may be thinking about digging out your old festive CDs. But the thing with Christmas compilations is they get thrown in some box somewhere. And by the time it comes around again, you've forgotten where you put them and have to go out and buy some more. Well, we have the solution. Just follow these three easy steps to seasonal satisfaction. One, switch on your computer. Two, go to playradiouk.com. And three, click on Play Christmas. Play Christmas UK. So good, it's Santa's favourite station. Tommy Boyd on Play 2 UK, the original cunning linguist. The Americans have fallen on this um, seasonal radio station that we run here called Christmas. Hungry, it's just Christmas songs. I was looking at um, I was looking at the at the playlist, and um, hey, <laughs> you know, it's fantastic, and you wouldn't hear it anywhere else. Because nobody else can do this sort of thing. And how delicious for you to be here at the start of it all. Well done. Well played. I'm congratulating you listening. This from uh, Gary Taylor, who is listening in Australia. He says, I'm listening in the western suburbs of Brisbane, Australia. I have my PC wired up to speakers in my workshop, and I listen while I am busy making rugby headgear. Why did I say it like that? While I am busy making rugby headgear. Anyway, he says, uh, describe where I'm from. I'm originally from Leicester. Matt Hollick is from there. Say no more. Regards, Gary Taylor. That's true. Matt Hollick on the Sunday roast from 8 until 11. Making rugby headgear. Because I see them sometimes put duct tape around their heads to keep their ears from flapping and being objects that other men can grab hold of. Um, But possibly in Australia, the men wear more formal headgear than that. I don't know. Uh, but thank you for that, Gary, for getting back, which is all we asked. Happy Tree has emailed on the business of buying dad's presents. It's until your dad is safely gathered in, what to buy your dad is one of those big things every Christmas. You want to spend the right amount of money. You want to show that you understand him well enough. You don't want to embarrass him. Um, and the relationship you have between your dad and yourself is always just so profound and complicated isn't it <laughs> and, and once a year you're asked to buy him something it's for somehow it's not somehow it's not so different from mum because you can buy mum something bubbly you know it's what body shop is there for so that's not too difficult it's a question of how much do you buy the 15 pound basket or 25 pound basket it's a piece of cake but dad chihuahua so happy tree says dad was always the hardest person to find presents for he never seemed to need or want anything he didn't read, and his healthy frame didn't need any more encouragement to eat. I was too young to buy alcohol. Well, for the first year of my life, obvious, 18 years of my life, obviously. He liked rugby. That was his great passion. He was a referee. Then a referee assessor as the years passed. So, cue lots of gift ideas about rugby books. I don't think he ever read any of them. No, dads don't read books that you give them. Anyway. Happy Tree goes on. But they sat proudly on the shelf in the living room just above the TV. So it was rugby books and golf equipment. There's always a new golf gadget to try out. Yes. If your dad liked golf, go there. Well done, Happy Tree. Email goes on. For example, the indoor putting practice hole with electronic ball pinger to give it back to you. Always a favourite toy for our cats as well. Yes. But for me these days, this question hangs heavy, as it did for you, Tommy. What would I get him if he was still alive? I think I'd love to give him something that would mean more to him than all the golfing paraphernalia in the world. Just a chance to hear me calling him Dad again. Miss him. Oh, well, says Happy Tree. Back to the action. Yeah. Doop-de-doop-de-doo. So, good listener, if your dad's still alive, enjoy. Right, now... This from uh, a spoonerism from North Sound Radio. It's an MP3 file that's been sent in. I haven't got the name of the sender, but thank you. Is it Eowyn McPherson? Here is a spoonerism as broadcast on North South Radio in Aberdeen some years back. I know you like these snippets from other radio stations. God, yes, we do. Thank you for this. This is great. Here we go. Each company present James and the Giant Peach that starts at 7pm tonight and at the Arts Centre Aberdeen stunning cunts sorry 
cunning stunt theatre company present The Beggar's Opera. I do hope we can edit that bit out. Proceeds go to... <laughs> Poor sod. Poor sod. Oh, that's a peach, isn't it? And I think it's genuine. I'm 99% certain it's genuine. Hang on a second. Did you hear that one, caller? Hello. Hello. Hi. This is Ali. It's Noah's wife. Listening Who? on the iPhone. Uh, oh, hello. Hello. Uh, thank you for calling. Hiya. So you're snuggling down in bed with a handsome man, but you're listening to your iPhone. That's great. That's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I thought I'd just let you know the last present I bought my dad before he passed away a few years ago. Yeah, what was that? Um, well, he's always liked steam trains. So I bought him a rather large musical pocket watch with a little steam train on it that went round. Beautiful. And he loved it. Yeah. And I have now got it back. Oh, and whenever so, you see it, you think of him. Exactly. What's your dad's name? Doug. Doug, good old yeah, Doug. That's right. And he loved it, and I every time I do, I, I wind it up and listen, and it's lovely. Well, do you know what they do? Um, pagan people at Halloween. No. They have a meal, and they lay a place for everybody who won't be there. Oh, right. And I think that's rather lovely. That is, really. Because... You know that it's going to be Christmas soon, and Doug's not going to be there. Exactly. <laughs> well, I tell you what, I'm going to do this Christmas. Go on. I don't know if you've heard of it, the Kung Fei Chinese lanterns that you light up. I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, they're huge, big lanterns, and you light them up and let them fly up into the sky. Yes, they regularly get mistaken for UFOs. I know. Correct. Carry yeah. on. Yes. Well, because we live on the beach, I thought it might be a good idea. Yeah. But I've got one for my mum and one for my dad, and we're going to write a little message on them and let them go. How beautiful. Yeah. Well, so that'd be something nice to do Christmas Day evening. Yeah, what are you going to write? Do you know? Well, just happy Christmas, mum. Happy Christmas, dad. Miss you both. Oh, don't I'll start. <laughs> no, that'd be nice. Oh, well. There's a lot of love there, isn't there, in your house? Exactly. Oh, sweet. And I have all the children with me too, so that'd be lovely. Yeah, um, circle of life and all that. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I like you. Thank you. I can I see. Like, what, I like I, you too. Actually, I can see what Neil sees in you. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> now Very turn nice. over and give him a kiss. Oh, I will. All right. Yeah. All right then. Thank bye you bye. for ringing. Talk to you again. Yeah. Bye bye. Wasn't that sweet? And now for something completely different. Let's listen to this d DJ. On North Sound Radio. Of course, the people who came up with the band, Cunning Stunts, or whatever they're called, whatever they are, Cunning Stunts, they knew what they were getting into, don't they? But I don't think they would ever have predicted that anybody would actually do it. Coming home, Stage Company present James and the Giant Peach. That starts at 7pm tonight. And at the Art Centre Aberdeen, Stunning Cunts... Sorry, C Cunning Stunts Theatre Company present The Beggar's Opera. I do hope we can edit that bit out. Proceeds go to... <laughs> oh, fantastic. Going to have to stitch these together and make them into a podcast. Uh, we've got some beauties. There's, there's, the, uh, well, I keep playing, you know, the, 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 the guy who reads out a request for Connie Lingus is great. But that, fantastic. Who sent that in? I can't remember, but thank you. That is stylish, as uh, Fraser would put it. Quite stylish. Excellent, thank you. Now, Sonny sent in a little clip as well, and I don't want to miss out on that. So I'm just quickly spooling down through this evening's emails, which have been quite profound, uh, to get to Sonny's... Did Sonny email it or, or Skype it in? I can't remember now for the life of me. So just bear with me a second. Uh... Oh, here we are. Yes, Sonny, thank you for this. It's a YouTube clip. Oh! It's George Carlin. We were going to play the second bit of... Oh, no, this is the Bill Hicks. The world is like a ride, so world is like a ride at an amusement park. And when you choose to go on it, you, choose choose go on it, you think no, how no, powerful no. our minds are. So this is me. Up real. Down, that's how powerful our minds are. It has thrills and chills. It's very bright and colored and, and round. That's me. The reason you heard that twice was because I clicked on it twice. For some reason, I've got in the habit of double-clicking on, uh, on the left thing, but... Uh, here we go. Bill Hicks. Thank you, Sonny.
The world is like a ride at an amusement park. And when you choose to go on it, you think it's real, because that's how powerful our minds are. And the ride goes up and down and round and round. It has thrills and chills, and it's very brightly colored, and it's very loud. And it's fun for a while. Some people have been on the ride for a long time, and they begin to question, is this real, or is this just a ride? And other people have remembered, and they come back to us, and they say, hey, don't worry, don't be afraid, ever, because this is just a ride. And we kill those people. <laughs> Shut him up. We have a lot invested in this ride. Shut him up. Look at my furrows of worry. Look at my big bank account and my family. This is, has to be real. It's just a ride. But we always kill those good guys who try and tell us that. You ever notice that? And let the demons run amok. But it doesn't matter because it's just a ride. And we can change it anytime we want. It's only a choice. No effort, no work, no job, no savings of money. A choice right now between fear and love. The eyes of fear want you to put bigger locks on your door, guns, close yourself off. The eyes of love instead see all of us as one. Here's what we can do to change the world right now to a better ride. Take all that money we spend on weapons and defense each year and instead spend it feeding, clothing, and educating the poor of the world, which it would many times over, not one human being excluded, and we can explore space together, both inner and outer, forever in peace. Thank you very much. You've been great. I hope you enjoy it. No, that was Bill Hicks. That was, that was pretty good. That was quite, quite profound. Uh, it's a cheap way of getting a round of applause, saying, why don't we feed poor people? But anyway, <clears throat> it's also a cheap way of signing off, saying you've been great. But it was a pretty imaginative little piece, wasn't it? Thank you for that. Who's this on Skype? I'm not reading your name out unless you explain why you're, that is your name. They've gone. Uh, there's been a little trail. I, I think there's a forum somewhere engaged in listening to us and having fun. Uh, where they've dared each other to come up with rude names to be on Skype. But the thing is, I don't really care. <laughs> so you can. <laughs> and it wouldn't embarrass me or get anybody into trouble. So you'll have to find another game if that is your agenda. Right, where are we? Great, great clip from North Sound Radio. The uh, cunning stunt spoonerism. I'm pretty certain it was brilliant. This from Tanzin. She says, my father died when I was 13, and I think of him every Christmas. We're talking about what you buy your dad for Christmas, and remembering your dad at Christmas if your dad's no longer around. She says, he was so proud of me when I made my own dress for Christmas. It was covered in sequins and fur. To be frank, it was appalling. I was 12, and it was the last Christmas we had together. <clears throat> I gave him an orange-shaped air freshener for the Morris Minor. I would do better now, for sure. A bit of time, maybe, Tamsin says. Why does Christmas make us so dot, 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 dot? I do like dot, 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 dot. I think it should be a proper word, a concept, and we need a verbal version of it, dot, 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 dot. Thank you, Tamsin. You can email studio at playradiouk.com. PlayRadioUK.com, part of the Something Corporation. Play 2 UK's talk shows are expanding. The Sunday Roast from 8pm, radio you won't hear anywhere else. Mondays from 8, myself, Tommy Boyd with at 10. Catherine Catt live from her dungeon. The Mistress on Art, Theatre, Opera and The Boudoir. Tuesdays, Steve Paul and Ali tell it like it is. Wednesday and Thursday, Mike Mendoza, Gadgets, Current Affairs and Life. And there's more to come. Check it out. Talk on Play 2 UK. Hey folks, want to win a brand new iPod Touch? That's right. I said brand new iPod Touch. Give yourself a chance of winning a brand new iPod Touch with something.info. You could win a brand new iPod Touch just for signing up. Join the community at something.info. Get content straight to your mobile phone and win a brand new iPod Touch. www.something.info. Ah, that's better. For dating, chat, and content straight to your mobile, then sign up at something.info and you'll have the chance to win an iPod Touch. Sign up now and experience something different. 
The world's favourite website creator is celebrating. Moonfruit.com has now helped over 2 million people like you make their website dreams a reality. Moonfruit's award-winning design tools let you create a professional website in simple, easy steps. And you don't need to be a web wizard to make it happen. Go to Moonfruit.com right now and take a look for yourself at some fantastic websites already enjoying massive success. Packages start from less than £3 a month. Create, register, host and support your very own world-class website today with Moonfruit.com. Tommy Boyd on Play 2 UK, a super song of sanctity in a weird and wacky world. Yes, listener Mark B, who's listening in South West London. What about in South West London? Mark, I know me South West London quite well. You never know. I might know your dad. With a clip. Our first caller is Mary in Hales Owen. You're on Talk Radio Mary. Is that Tommy? Yes? Yeah, uh, this is Mary. It is. Um, I, I've been going deaf for the last ten years. I've got a deaf phone here, and I'd rather go bald than be deaf, because nobody wants to know you when you're deaf. If you have a hearing aid on, um, you can hear background noise when you're in a crowd. Yes, we're talking about menstruation, not deafness, Mary. Oh, I thought I thought you were talking about deafness then. Okay then. Right. Oh, okay, thank you. Oh, I'd rather I'd rather be menstruating than going deaf. <laughs> yeah, I know it's not about going deaf. It's about baldness. <laughs> Are you going bald? No. Are you menstruating? No, because I'm seventy nine. You're out of the discussion. <laughs> okay. <no. laughs> we'll Bye. do deafness tomorrow. Bye, we'll, we'll Tommy. Do, we'll, bye, we'll do deafness tomorrow. What would you like? There's no point telling somebody who's deaf that we're going to do deafness tomorrow. Oh, jeez, I don't remember that. God, that's a good one, isn't it? So we're doing, I'm doing a programme about baldness and menstruation. And I think the, the topic was, although women have to menstruate, and that's a pain, at least it it stops late 40s, early 50s. But men just go on getting balder and balder. And it's a more profound indignity and hardship because of its resonance with their mortality. I think it's a powerful point. <laughs> but I don't remember Mary ringing up. Our first caller is Mary and Hales Owen. You're on Talk Radio Mary. Is that Tommy? Yes? Yeah, uh, this is Mary. It is. Um, I, I've been going deaf for the last ten years. I've got a deaf phone here, and I'd rather go bald than be deaf, because nobody wants to know you when you're deaf. If you have a hearing aid on, um, you can hear background noise when you're in a crowd. Yes, we're talking about menstruation, not deafness, Mary. Oh, I thought, <laughs> I thought you were talking about deafness. <laughs> right, uh, and something else to archive. God, you know, <clears throat> like a lot of um, interesting shows, <clears throat> I've noticed the last two nights when it's just been me by myself and you listening, um, it's just sort of got hotter and hotter and better and better in the last sort of half hour, really. Almost as though other people, not you good listener, but other people are thinking, what's going on? It's just a bloke by himself. How can that work? Uh, but everybody has a sidekick. Uh, everyone has a second voice. They talk to their producer or their newsreader or the tech op. Don't they? No. Well, yes, they do. But we sit around in the office sometimes just um, chucking paint at the walls and going, what should we do that's different? See if it works. If it doesn't, never do it again. If it does, do more of it. So this is great. This is great. Thank you, Mark, for that one. I'll just take another one of uh, your little clips. And I found a way of, whilst I'm live on air, archiving these as well, which is good. I hope this one's... Oh. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Yes, Hello. I'm waiting. I just wanted to pause before I talked to you. Oh, did you? Yes. What's that for, then? Silence is quite powerful on the radio. Silence is golden. And I'll tell you what, you're not a golden boy. You're coming on the radio insinuating people that have got cats, got female dementia, a load of old rubbish. No, I didn't suggest that at yes, all. Yes, you did. No, it was the other way round for a start, Edna. What? Uh, I, I suggested that it could be, that there could be a link between some symptoms... Well, I've got two cats and I'm not female. ...can be associated with pre-senile dementia. I've got a problem in cheek and on the way down doing all right. It's not new. The idea's been around for many years. Well, where'd you get it from? A, a scientific paper. What, what's the paper called? Feline Entropy and PSD. Oh, right. Is that better now? 
Am I going senile? It's a load of old bollocks, says Egna. And I thought the presenter did quite well to make up the name of that paper. On his feet. Fem feline entropy and PFD. Anyway. Great, that's another one in the archives. Just see if this is a proper call or, or a time waster. Hello. Hey, Tommy. Hey, who's this? It's Christopher, not from West Wickham. How are you doing? I'm fine, thanks, you. Uh, what you got for us? Because I've got to squeeze in some very nice audio that's been rushed through at the last minute. Oh, I was just wondering how you do it, Tommy. I mean, I'd, I've been doing my, um, my sort of university radio show now for a few weeks, and yes. when I didn't have anybody in the studio with me, it was crap. Yes. Well, I, I'm, I'm a genius. Yeah. No, I'm not a genius. Um, what? Well, people, st people send stuff in, and it's great. There's always yeah. something there. Look, there's always something there. There's always something there. Um, uh, you, you could um, do better than just balls it out, mate. Because I, I guess yeah. you, you're still trying to pre please the program controller, aren't you? Oh, no, he doesn't care. I found out he was, um, well, the new program controller that we just elected this week. He yeah. was quite good. He's, um, turns out he was quite an Ian Lee fan, so right. we're sort of in the same boat. Okay. Well, you can't do it till you turn 40 anyway. That's what I always tell people. Can't do what? Exactly. exactly. Much, really. <laughs> Much, you kids. Uh, it's just it's a pleasant wait, though. And when you get to 40, it's fantastic because you've got all your powers and you don't give a shit anymore, OK? And my dad told me that. One of the few profound things my father told me since we're talking about fathers, he said to me, 40 is your best age, son. He said you've got all your powers and you don't give a shit. And he was right. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't tell me much profound, my dad. He did tell me never go out with a woman who can grow a bigger moustache than you can, which is also quite profound. <laughs> 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 nice talking to you, Chris. Uh, keep um, keep practicing. One of um, one of many would be. Born. One. Good morning. You're on Talk Sport. Hello. The music may be grown on you, mate, but it's flipping grown over us. We were promised um, Chris Ashley tonight and Mike Dick, and now we've got this. Um, well, it was. So who do you complain to here? And how do you know he'll be there in the morning? What are you on about, pal? What, what's your Well, what everybody only here? stays here two minutes. Who can we complain to you on talk radio? What about? About you. About me? Yeah. What's the problem with me? Well, you're not supposed to be on tonight. Well, I can't help that. Well, who said I'm not supposed to be on? The papers. The papers? Yeah. No, don't believe what you read in the papers. What difference does it make to you anyway? One plonker on the radio is the same as any other plonker. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it is. Yes, it is. But, I, but, but you, they said we were having another plonker tonight. And well, you've got one. this plonker yeah, and you'll just have to put it in your pipe and smoke it, If pal. we're told we're getting a plonker, we want a plonker. If we're told we're getting a plonker, we're yeah. getting a plonker. We're entitled to it. What do you mean you're entitled to it? You haven't got any entitlement whatsoever. Do you we're know that? Not, Zero. Not. You've got, got a right. less than minus <laughs> well, amount of entitlement. Right, no, they haven't. People you haven't got, right. you haven't and, got any rights. We are told that we are getting... And Mike what what rights have you got? If, well, if we are told we are getting a dick in tonight, then we want a dick in tonight. There is, first of all, Do you know what I'm saying, Tommy? Uh, no, wait, wait, a minute, wait a second, want, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second, otherwise... No, if you don't stop and listen, you're off the air. If we are told we're getting... That, that's a fair deal, isn't it? Honka. You're told we're getting... No, up and down, no, you're still rattling on, aren't you? No, we're listening. told we're getting a dick in and no. we've got a dickhead. Can we just... Tommy, can I get my money back, no. please? You, you said read the label. I read oh, the label. Go away. Feeble. It's got to be a conversation. Sorry, guys. It's got to be a conversation, you know? And if you got, he might have been funny, but he just kept Hello? going on. Hello? You're on Talk Sport. What's your name? Is that, is that Tommy, is it? Speaking. Oh, that bloke that you had on just now, he's dead right. You're the plunker. Thank you. <laughs> Fantastic. I miss a bit of that, you know, because... Our people used to enjoy ringing me up just to be rude, and I didn't care, um, and to have an argument, and I love all that. You know, that sort of heat thing. You can't do it all the time, but uh, I do miss the personal insults, uh, which is fantastic. Will in Portsmouth, sent on his iPhone, he emails, hi, another iPhone listener here snuggled up in bed. Fantastic. And yes, I can have it on loudspeaker, and I usually do. Now, I did not know this. So, if you've got one of these fancy new iPhones... You can just use it like a radio. 
Fantastic. Who needs FM? Worth every penny, as I can listen and email using the same handset. Yeah. Will, well done. You will live forever. Tamsin adds, I forgot to add, I have Wi-Fi and I listen along with the cats and the dogs in the kitchen. We're in rural Hampshire and, gosh, it's snowing, is it? No. Surely not. But wouldn't that be fantastic? Don't we want... Hands up who wants three feet of snow this Christmas. Me. You? Yeah. You know why? A, because it's beautiful, and B, because of all those plonkers, the Green Ink Brigade, who go on and on about how one flake of snow and the country grinds to a standstill. Well, it doesn't. They wish it did, so they'd have something to moan about. They're the people who get into work 20 minutes late and go on about what a terrible journey they've had to get in. 20 minutes late. And how the council haven't gritted the roads. And I love that. Don't you? I love the chaos, don't you? Don't you like the fact that it turns the world upside down for a couple of days? Fantastic. And you throw snowballs, don't you? Of course you do. And you think about a, a, a snowman. Of course you do. And, and you even think about a slide, which we used to do when we were little, but now I think it's illegal or something. The chaos. The chaos. Because don't our lives just go from day to day to day, as Shakespeare said in Macbeth, to the last syllables of recorded time? Seen Groundhog Day? That's about us. Every one of us. It is. It's about you and it's about me. Because yesterday is like today and today's going to be like tomorrow. But you give it a snow, way Suddenly you're alive. Because you've got to think everything through. And you can have a laugh at the people who go on about the chaos. <laughs> so, Tamsin, I hope you're right. I hope it is snowing. Cheers, fella, says Andrew Cook. He emails... To try and redress the balance a bit for the southeastern side of the UK, we've established we've got um, uh, a heavy listenership in the west of England. He says, I'm based in Canterbury, Kent, and I've been listening to play for six months or so now, and I like the way this new media thing is going, and I'm excited for the future. My poor old Dab radio doesn't get a look in anymore. Do you know, I think they're going to have to let Dab go. I mean, you know, in the words of the boss, are they going to have to let it die? I'm beginning to think. The government made a lot of money about selling off all the frequencies, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen. We've got two dab radios in the house, and I can't get a peep out of either of them. Andrew says, please promote the Sunday Roast's Facebook group. I think we are only about 80 or so people short of our target of 500 members to make Matt Hollick eat a bull's willy. Now, I have news about that, and I don't have the time to give it to you, but Andrew, thank you for your email. Can you, Andrew... Get on to the Sunday Roast Facebook group and campaign hard. 80 more people and Matt Hollick eats penis on Sunday. And I managed to find a penis for him. And he went and got it today. It was a three-hour round trip. And he brought it back. It's nearly four feet long. So, Andrew, there's your task, your mission, should you choose to accept. Nick Fudge says, hi, I was listening in bed and couldn't email earlier. I'm on my laptop. I'm originally from Liverpool. I'm now in Long Island, New York, near Manhattan. Beautiful. Nick, we salute you. Thank you for that. And last email of the day, uh, Mark B., uh, a real friend of the programme. Thank you, Mark. He says, I'm the one who provides the clips for the charity and the charity auction ideas. You do. And you're a top man. And we've had a bit of fun here and looking forward to 8 o'clock tomorrow night when it's Mike Mendoza.